afternoon, everyone. Thank you for waiting. My name is Kenneth, and today I am sharing on the IoT distribution products updates. The agenda that I will cover are Windows Embedded up products updates. This includes the Windows 10 and 11 IoT Enterprise OS, Windows Embedded Server and SQL Server. Windows IoT Lockdown Utility, sharing on the advantages of this Windows 10 IoT Lockdown Utility. Acronics and McAfee Products Updates, sharing on the different variant of these two products. Case sharing for production in factory, sharing on how we use the different products from Microsoft, Acronics and McAfee to implement in a factory setting. Lastly, will be the FAQ, sharing on what we need to do before ordering the products. What is Windows Embedded OS or IoT OS? You might not know what is Windows Embedded OS or IoT OS. Windows Embedded is a series of customizable operating systems for special requirement. It can help equipment manufacturers to shorten time to market. It is applied extensively in tens of thousands of devices in the smart device domain, such as thin client, host terminal, ATM, kiosk, digital signage, onboard and navigation devices, industrial, security and medical equipment. Even if you come from industry like finance, service, retail, industrial, automation, medicine and transportation, we can build cost-effective and tailor-made solution according to your special specific requirement. In short, this Windows Embedded OS or I, IoT OS can be used in almost all places or application. However, it must be used with a specific purpose and not for general purpose. Windows Embedded Product Update. Under the Windows Embedded Product family we have Windows Embedded Standard West, Post Ready Industry, Windows Embedded uh, Professional for Embedded System FAST, CE Compact, Windows Embedded Server, SQL Server, and also the Windows IoT Enterprise OS. West has a smaller footprint in this category, we have WES 7E, 7P. Posts are mainly used for retail. In this category, we have Win 8 or Win 8.1 industry. FAST is the same as Windows 7 Pro, but only for embedded use. In this category, we have Win 8 or Win 8.1 Pro. CE and Compact usually used for smaller machine, single operation, example, barcode scanner, hardware real-time support. In this category, we have Compact 2013. Windows Server and SQL Server, they are used for fixed function devices, as example, surveillance video, call center, recording program, etc. It cannot be used in mail exchange. Under Windows Embedded Server, we have the latest product, Windows Server IoT 2022. And under SQL Server, we have SQL 2019. In general, EOL dates are listed below each product. You can see that there are three new products that launched last year. So they are Windows IoT 2021 LTSC, Windows 11 IoT, and Windows Server IoT 2022. One thing to note, Windows 11 IoT does not have the LTSC version yet. Microsoft estimated to launch the Windows 11 IoT LTSC on year 2023. Actual schedule yet to announce. I shall share more on the differences between LTSC and SEC on the next slide. On this slide, you can see that version 21H2 is the latest version for both Windows 10 IoT Enterprise 2021 LTSC and Windows 11 IoT Enterprise. Starting from year 2021 onwards, Microsoft has renamed the semi-annual semi channel SAC to annual channel AC. 
This is because from year 2021 onwards, instead of having two features updates per year, it has reduced to once a year. As you can see from this table, the feature update for AC is one a, once a year and LTSC is every two to three years. For AC version, user can only delay the updates for 365 days. Beyond that, user will be forced to update. Whereas for LTSC version, user can choose whether to update or not. So I give you a scenario. If you have a group of cure system that are linked to one another, and after updating the features, the system clash because the new updates might not be compatible with the hardware. If you have been to McDonald's, you probably have seen the cure system. Imagine what if all the cure system are down, then it will be a major issue. Another main difference is the service lifespan. LTSC is 10 years, whereas AC is only 18 months. That's why most of the embedded user will prefer LTSC. This table shows the EOL dates for the Windows IoT Enterprise LTSC is around 10 years from the launch date. Example, Windows 10 IoT Enterprise LTSC 2021 is launched last year. And we can notice that the EOL date is November 2031. And Windows 11 IoT Enterprise is December 2031. Windows IoT Enterprise LTSE 2021 has more features compared to other versions. Example, comparing to Windows 10 IoT Enterprise LTSE 2019 and 2016. Windows 10 IoT Enterprise LTSE 2021 has smaller footprint, more lockdown and branding control, device update center service, better Azure IoT Edge support. As for Windows 11 IoT Enterprise, besides having the feature as what Windows 10 IoT Enterprise LTSC 2021 has, the Windows 11 IoT Enterprise is able to support the following. It has a new model UI and able to support Wi-Fi 6E and USB 4.0. The TPM 2.0 required has to be physical hardware. To summarize, what has changed for Windows 11? Updates is once a year, previously is twice a year. Life cycle is 36 months for commercial edition. New user experience, able to support USB 4.0 and Wi-Fi 6. If you intended to upgrade from Windows 10 IoT to Windows 11 IoT, you have to meet this requirement. Basic requirement for Windows 11 IoT are 1 GHz 2 core CPU, 4 GB RAM, 64 GB storage. It is suitable for devices that interact with users which require extra security protection. We are able to provide in-house lockdown utility for kiosk mode, hardware compatibility, guarantee, and technical consultancy. Microsoft has released a product, Windows 10 IoT Enterprise on ARM. This is for ARM NSP series. It is for users who plan to use RISC instead of the X86 and want to run X86 on ARM to save development cost. It has a new pricing tier, which is the Windows IoT Enterprise base. The price is lower than the existing three Windows IoT Enterprise tiers. It is perfect for device builder, targeting small form factor, low cost and low power IoT devices. The operating system features across pricing tiers and CPU architecture remain the same and are not changed by the introduction of this new tier. You can approach us for more information. As mentioned on previous slide, we understand that Windows 10 IoT Enterprise OS are charged according to the different CPU scale. The pricing tiers are categorized onto four categories, which are entry, value, high end, and the new tier base. Entry tier are for those entry level CPU, example, Celeron, J, and N series. Value tier are for Core i3 or i5, and high end are for Core i7 or i9. 
entry tier price is the lowest, followed by value and high end. Take Windows 10 for Pro, for example. It is charged at one price, regardless of what CPU skill that the user are using, which is about the same price as high end. Say, for example, if the system is using Celeron J series CPU, the user is supposed to purchase entry tier for this case, but if they purchase value or high end instead, it can still work. However, if the user is supposed to purchase value or high end, they cannot use entry. In conclusion, the user can purchase that is higher than it's supposed to be, but not the other way around. What we have are the different Windows Server IoT skill for different application. I won't be going through all of it, but the two commonly used are Windows Server IoT Standard and Windows Server IoT Data Center. For example, Windows Server IoT Standard is used for authenticated server with active directory integration. Example, FAR, print, networking services, or those require a connected keyboard, monitor, or mouse to perform its authenticated purpose. Windows Server IoT Data Center is used for a turnkey solution for highly virtualized data centers or cloud environment that can consolidate several complex functions into a single server appliance. The solution may require storage spaces direct. You can approach us for more information. Here are the skills for the SQ, the SQL IoT. SQL IoT standard is a full feature database for mid-tier applications on servers not exceeding 24 cores. SQL IoT Enterprise is used for intelligent applications requiring mission critical in memory performance, security, and high availability. This is the Windows Server and SQL Server licensing model. Windows Server 2012 version is licensed based on the physical deploy CPU, and version after that is licensed based on the number of physical core of the processor. So what is Windows Server Cal? On the next slides, I shall share more on what it is about. Cal stands for Client Access License. There are three types of Cal, User Cal, Device Cal, and RDS Cal. With the User Cal, user can purchase a Cal for every user who access the server to use services such as fast storage or printing, regardless of the number of devices they use for the access. So purchasing a user cal might make more sense if the company's employees need to have roaming access to the corporate network by using multiple devices or from unknown devices or if it has simply have more devices than user in the organization. With a device cal, user purchase a cal for every device that access the server, regardless of the number of user who use that device to access the server. So device cal make more economic and administrative sense if the company has worker who share devices, for example, on different work shifts, or RDS cal is required for remote desktop access. There are two types of RDS cal. RDS per user cal and RDS per device cal. This is ideal for companies with users who need to access the full desktop remotely. Remote desktop services access required both a Windows Server cal and an RDS cal for each user or device. Now I am sharing on Windows Server IoT 2022, which is the latest version. It is a long-term servicing channel, LTSC, offering which provides full capabilities of, of Windows Server 2022 for fixed function, server class devices supporting demanding workload at the edge. Windows Server IoT has a few versions. The main differences between these versions are the VM support and CAL requirement. To qualify for additional VMs for standard storage standard or telecommunications, all calls must be licensed again. Once all calls are relicensed, 
rights for two additional VMS for a total of four VMs will be granted. Say for example, if you want to license three VM, from the table on the right, we can see that under standard licensing, it can license up to two VM rights. So if you want to license all three VM, the user have to purchase two numbers of standard license. If you were to purchase the data center licensing, which is able to support unlimited VM rights, to license three VM, this might not make economy sense as the cost of the data center license will be higher compared to two numbers of standard license. Windows 10 IoT Lockdown Utility At Avantech, we can assist to utilize the Windows 10 IoT Enterprise Lockdown function to come up with a user-friendly UI. Instead of typing the command in the command line, you can use the UI to click on different settings. So, this is a screenshot of the Windows IoT Lockdown Utilities. Clicking on the different setting on the black column, you can use these settings to modify based on your preference. You can modify the shell launchers, keyboard filter, setting, remove pop-ups, notification, and more. Acronics and McAfee products are they? Acronics is a leader in cyber protection. Under the Acronix product family, there are Acronix True Image OEM version, Acronix True Image, Acronix Cyber Backup, Acronix Net Deploy. Acronix True Image OEM version is targeting OEM customer. It is based on one or two features that OEM customer frequently use in Acronix True Image. Under this version, it is categorized to personal version. HD version, data protection version, Acronix True Image OEM for server. Personal version it is widely used by PC manufacturers and system builders. It provides easy to use factory reset for all end user without the need to ship PC back to factory for reset. Also used for embedded solution. HD version. It's the best choice for hard disk vendors, provides this cloning as a major value for end user. Allow end user to clone full system from old disk to new one without hassle. Data protection version is an advanced backup features, incremental, differential backup with advanced scheduling options. With easy to use interface, no image backup required. Acronix True Image OEM for server. This is based on Acronix True Image and support factory reset features for server manufacturers and system builders. Acronix True Image is usually for less than five users, and Acronix Cyber Backup is usually for more than five users. Acronix Snap Deploy is usually for lab testing or production line. This enable deployment and provisioning of all servers and workstation at one, creates and extract this image of any standard configurations, perform deployment from different image format, deploy the image to multiple machines in one easy step. Compatibility with image created by other Acronix products. This table is a comparison of the key features available in the OEM version. With the version of the Acronix True Image, we now support entire PC backup with both Acronix True Image Personal and Acronix True Image HD version of OEM solutions. This slide shows the comparison between True Acronix True Image and Acronix Cyber Backup. So you can see that the cyber backup version will have more backup feature available and the true image version will have the data synchronization features. Previous slide are the comparison for client backup. This slide show the key features comparison for server backup. So people usually get the backup advanced version when they want to cater for more location. You can approach us for more information. This slide shows 
how user can deploy the different acronyms products onto their solution. Level three is the most complicated, followed by level two and one. Solution A, level three. Install with Acronix Net Deploy on the master machine. You can easily set up for hundreds of machines at the same time. Do not require manual startup and support different models of computers while working online. Install Acronix True Image full version on the targeted hardware. You can support backup scheduling automatically, backup image files at a specific time and save them to a specific hidden disk this phase and fast incremental and differential backups. Solution B, level two, install a chronic true image OEM personnel on targeted hardware. You can support Windows image file and the ability to deploy entire disk to specific machines and allows user to manually store the image, latest image files to USB and deploy to target machine sequentially. And also it makes simple and easy to operate. Solution C, level one, install Avantai OS recovery and backup tool on targeted hardware. In Avantai, we can utilize Windows built-in feature and wrap development and backup of image files. We are sharing one of McAfee product whitelisting solution. You may ask how the whitelist is created. It is created by scanning the entire system during installation and cataloging all applications, libraries, drivers, and scripts. When the program tries to run, the systems check the whitelist for it present and then permit it. However, when the new unknown binary tries to run in, it is blocked because it is not on the whitelist. In this case, all unknown dangerous threat can be stopped. Under the McAfee whitelisting solution, there are three options. Application control, change control, e-policy, orchestrator, in short, EPO. Application control is proactive protection, reducing maintenance work. You can prevent from unauthorized application installation and it protects against zero day attack automatically. Change control provides access right on who, when, and what to access. It prevents out of policy changes and has far integrating monitoring for compliance. E policy orchestrator, EPO, is a centralized management managing McAfee configurations and policy for a single location which can generate performance and compliance report automatically. I shall share more on the next few slides. In Avantech, we utilize the McAfee built-in features to come up with the McAfee manager. This McAfee manager make McAfee application without EPO and McAfee embedded control easy to use. You can configure and update the whitelist by using McAfee Manager, no need to key in using command line. You can combine the three options into a more comprehensive production or something that's suitable for your application. In Avantec, we offer two types of licensing, distribution license and bundle license. For distribution license, it means customer only purchase the license without bundle with any hardware. This type of license before ordering, customer will require to sign an indirect agreement. I shall share in details on the agreement in later slide. As for bundle license, means customer purchase the license together with the hardware. For this type of license, does not require to sign any agreement from the customer. On these slides, we are sharing the McAfee whitelisting for server OS. This slide looks similar to the previous slides, but take note that some of the part number are different. This slide has the comparison of the key feature based on the different combination selection. You can approach us for more information. Please 
sharing for production in factory. In Advantech, we provide easy, mass, and secure OS solution for production. For the factory automation, we provide a combination of package for ease of use, safe and secure software, which includes Microsoft Windows, Acronis Backup and Recovery OEM version, McAfee whitelisting solution. To make the production site a smart factory, you may use Acronis Net Deploy to deploy not only OS images, configurations, but also the data of the whole disk, including McAfee production. Acronis True Image Backup or recovery solution to the end devices in a massive scale simultaneously. When you deploy the Windows Embedded OS, Acronis and McAfee into the system, you will get the features and benefit. One time charge perpetual licensing, you can proactively protect embedded systems with lower resource consumption without compromising system performance. Deploy quickly from a single image to multiple PC via a single point of propagation or multi-point transmission from a central management console. Support remote control and repair, reduce maintenance and operation costs. And manage deployment modes such as manual, automatic, user-initiated and schedule. You can also work in standalone mode without network access. These are the complete operating system and distribution product for the three brands. I won't be going through much on this because it is just a summary of the product offering. Let's move on to the next slides. We have come to the FAQ session. Now I will go through the most frequently asked question. So when customer purchase the Microsoft OS distributed product, which means they purchase the OS from Avantech without bundling the hardware. In this case, they will need to sign the Microsoft CLA before ordering. CLA stands for Customer License Agreement. By signing the CLA, is to make the customer an OEM to proceed with the purchase of the Microsoft OS distributed products. The CLA will be done over a secure internet portal from Microsoft. It is cost-free and does not include any minimum quantity or pricing. It is a base license agreement covering all available products in this licensing option. CLA expires typically every one to three years. Renewal is required once CLA expires. Once the CLA is 45 days from its expiry, an automatic email from Microsoft is sent to the authorized representative. Acronis distributed products, no contract is required. When you purchase the McAfee distributed product, a contract similar to the Microsoft CLA call indirect OEM agreement is required before ordering the McAfee distributed products. We will require some information from the customer. Example, the full company name, address, contact person, their job title, email, and etc. Avantech will forward this information to McAfee to draft out the indirect OEM agreement. This agreement is perpetual. It does not have an expiry date, which is tagged to the company name. That will be all for this session. Thank you for your time.